Um, well, I want to go back to the sequential shifting because that's been one that we've heard a lot about because it will help on not only road courses, but it will help on restarts. So a question, and I'm going to just go crew chief here on you. I want to ask, when we normally are trying to save fuel and we are sometimes under caution, the fact that it is a little bit difficult to get to neutral, is that going to make it harder to, to I don't, save I don't fuel? think that will change. I don't think it will be easier, but I don't think it will be harder. Again, the, the engine, everything about that, all the aspects of that is the same as our current car. So I, I think all that will still be the same, trying to save fuel under caution. And even rolling out of the throttle early, getting in the throttle a little bit later when you're under green flag conditions. I think all that should be the same regardless of the sequential shift. You can't stump him. He has an answer for everything, and it's normally right. Uh, okay, Larry, this transmission, the transaxle, this will be the first time ever that we're seeing this transaxle. How different is that going to make this car? Yeah, I mean, it all goes along with the independent rear suspension that, that Denny Hamlin was mentioned. It's, uh, it, it, and we don't, we don't have that transmission but it's kind of a, a gearbox that's all together with the, tr with the uh, transaxle. And we no longer really have a dry shaft. You have what they call a prop shaft. That's what comes out of the back of the engine. You still have a bell housing. You still have a clutch assembly. But what ties the transaxle and the gearbox together is, again, it's, it's almost like a dry shaft, but the right terminology is a prop 